Hello and welcome to this review of the Dasso Dornia Alpha Jet made by Hella in one twenty second scale and this is the final one in the series. We built every single aircraft of La Patrouille de France, the uh, aerobatic display team of the Army de l'Air, the French Air Force and I, I, I am honestly shook that we've done this and there are some amazing photos I've taken on like an airfield thing that I built. It, the airfield itself is probably not the best construction but I, I've got the photo I really wanted and I've got it so I'm really excited for you guys to see it. Also if you don't know already these builds I do them over on Twitch as Ms. Modeler so come and join me and build them all live. So as you've seen this kit is by Hella and I love the box art on this kit if you saw it at the start of the video and the construction of this kit is very easy. Every Alpha Jet you pretty much build on one second second scale is either Airfix Humbrol or Matchbox or Starfix but we won't talk about that. Now the Hella Humbrol kits are very similar there are some slight differences in the cockpit and just a few parts that changed over time. The Hella boxing that I have is one of the last ones before their rebrands and I think it's why I think the box art is so unique and special. It's sort of come from that era after um, they were doing pictures of the models on them and uh, they did something that showed a lot of movement and passion. This is also sort of a review of me building every kit that was included in the uh, anniversary set that Hella did that I got back in Wow, the, the early 2000s when I was on holiday with my parents in France and I always promised my dad I'd build it. I actually ended up buying that kit twice and I never ended up building all the Patrouille de France aircrafts. So this is, this is it. This is me finally doing that. I'm so happy about it. The cockpit on this kit, by the way, is surprisingly detailed considering, again, the age of the kit and that it's a fairly low skill requirement kit. I genuinely was really satisfied with how the cockpit looks. I did, well, I thought I lost a part of it, but I hadn't actually. <laughs> I bought a backup, um, one of the sort of handbrow kits, and I, I did steal it, cut it, and pop it onto the cockpit. However, in the end, it actually turned out it wasn't needed. I, the other part had sort of arrived loose. You can't really buy the um, Alphabet new anymore. As of this video in 2021 at least, I'm sure at some point Hella is going to re-release it because much like the BAA Hawk in, uh, in the United Kingdom, the Alpha Jet is the symbol of uh, the French Air Force used as by their display team and so I, it's like a popular subject and I, it surprises me that they don't they don't have one out at the moment. You know, Italy have the Frecce Tricoloi, uh, we have the red arrows over here in the United Kingdom, so it's it's sort of a shame. I mean, especially because like there's uh, Zvezda, however you say that, produ uh, producer of model kits, the Russian manufacturer. I think they have three display teams right now, so it, it is a bit of a surprise to me. I hope they do come out again soon because it'd be nice to buy a brand new, beautiful 172nd scale alphabet and also buy 148 scale ones that are relatively new by kinetic anyway. So in terms of painting the cockpit, I tried to find images, as you can see, I was like going through Google whilst I was streaming there and just looking at what, what cockpit colours I should use. It ended up being pretty much just a standard grey affair. I just always like to check and I try and have reference images whilst I'm streaming in general. Um, and quite often I'll show them like you can see on here whilst I'm streaming on Twitch. Now we use the standard trio of colours, but importantly for this, I undercoated in white. I used the Warhammer white um, base coat and it, it doesn't seem to give like a super opaque white but it allows me to paint sort of the Raval Aquacolor white on top and as you can see where the line I've already painted white it gives a super vibrant opaque white and this was a game changer for me. A lot of you said this in the comments that I should be undercoating a white. Of course I should be. I will remember this always going forward so thank you guys for nagging me on it because I just kept forgetting to do it and kept using my humble grey and it was silly. <laughs> of course we're using the standard Ravel aqua colours of 56 um, for the blue. We're using white, I can't remember the number, I've, I've lost the number on mine but I've also got fiery red number 31. They are the tricolore that we use for Tour de France. Um, they just 
seemed to be the colours that fit the most. There was a debate about whether the Pâteau de France colours are actually more of a tealy blue. I did start sort of mixing my own custom blue that was uh, had a bit of white put into it. In the end, I kept adding bits on and kept going and I ended up back at the original blue. <laughs> so it is what it is. You know, I, I think it is the right colour. You know, we use a lot of different images to try and make sure we got the right one. Now, you can see the tail section broke off there. We're going to talk about one of the kit uh, main downfalls that I always find to be a pain with Alpha Jet kits. I've built many Alpha Jets in my time. I built Assets to Portugal, I built a Belgian display one, I built a Belgian air training school one, and this. And the landing gear on every single kit, whether it's the Humbrol box, Humbrol Air Fix boxing, or whether it's the Heller boxing, it's always exactly the same. The landing gear is the weakest point of this aircraft and it always breaks. Especially if you're taking it to um, model shows, it, it it always it always just breaks, and I've just come to accept that now. So I, I do have to repair that several times during the course of this model, as you will notice. At one point, I didn't even realise the landing gear had come off. So that's how weak it is, to be perfectly honest with you. You can see that I've done the red on there now already, the fiery red, and I'm going over the white now. I am freehanding it bit of a brave move but again I feel like my freehanding technique has come on leaps and bounds since we originally started doing this series so I felt a bit more confident you can see the white oh my god honey it's, it's looking so fresh I'm so happy with how the white looks you can also see that I've done a clear line over uh, as of where the blue ends now the Pateau de France has sort of blue then it has a white sort of almost like a lightning bolt to distinguish it then from the red bottom and I wasn't really sure where to do it, so it's not on there yet, but I did use the spare backup kit that I bought, which should have parts missing anyway. I bought it as a spares box on eBay, uh, but I used the decals from that to help line up where the red was going to go in the end. That is a really easy way to do it. If you haven't got the um, an extra set of decals on hand, what you can do is just photocopy them, cut them out, and use it as a mask and help work out where the red would end. It, it's, I think it is relatively clear on the actual model kit itself. There are sort of panel lines that help indicate that as well. Now, I've also sort of freehanded the tail for the most part, and I kept going back and forth on the tail a multitude of times, trying to work out if I felt like the tail was right, if the white was too thick, if the blue was too thick, if the red was too thick, if the angles right. I, I don't know why I didn't just mask it up in the first place, to be perfectly honest. And when I have to do other display things going forward, if I have a similar situation again, I will just mask it. But in this instance, I didn't. It was silly of me. You can see that I've used one of the decals there to help line up where the red should go. I then just used sort of, well, measuring with my eyes to work out where it would go on the other side. I then continued to paint the red in the entire underside of the aircraft. I have stuff on the, that, that under part. Um, I think it's sort of the, the essentially the, the, the diesel container for the smoke or the smoke generator. And I ended up removing that to then allow me to put a decal on later on. I don't know why I stuck it on originally. I remember thinking to myself, I need to put a decal on there. And then when I came to it, I was like, yeah, I'm just going to rip that off and put a decal on top of it. So that is what it is. That is also white. So pen painting red around it meant I had to paint over the red. It was, it was just a very silly way to do it. And I should have thought about that more, but it is what it is. You can see also the uh, broken undercarriage several times. So... Yeah, that, that was a pain. The tail section, as it has been with nearly every Pateau de France aircraft, was the worst part for me. In reality, I think it's just that I I rush things. I think that's that's the reason I, I struggle with it. I, I need to just take my time on it more. Instead of just trying to constantly get, you know, the, the white line out, I need to just give myself time, let things dry fully, and then go for it. But as you can see, I repaired the aircraft and we got something that looks pretty damn good, right? Like, I, I really like how this aircraft turned out. I think it looks punchy, it, it's got really clear definition to the lines. So it was time to do the decals and I started with those little lightning ones we mentioned earlier. Just trying to make sure the red all looked right and I was going to have to actually go and repaint bits if they weren't correct. And I did have to in a few places, but it wasn't as hard as it would have been if I just hadn't measured up at all so I'm really glad I took the time to do that but let's talk about why I wanted to do this project so back when I was a lot younger 
it's really weird to think about this, but I went to France with my parents and you're, what you're seeing now is footage uh, from the air show that I, I saw there now. When we went to France, we had no idea that the Petit de France were actually performing at the beach near where we were staying. I, I spotted it on a roundabout and, you know, my, my dad was already on board for us to go see them. And it was amazing. Also, whilst we were on holiday, there was a, a toy shop in the local sort of town. I wasn't sure if it was a town or a village. I think it was a town. And we went in there quite often. I always just, you know, wanted to go in there. I, I'm a creature of habit. And that was no different when I was a child. And there was a Patel de France anniversary set that contained every aircraft, bar the missed air, because that, that aircraft is owned by Reval. Um, but yeah, it had every every aircraft in there, and I, I begged my dad for it, and eventually he bought it for me. And ever since then, I've always promised that I would, you know, build this kit, and until today, I'd never done that. So this, 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 this is why this is so special to me. I finally did something that I've been meaning to do for, what, since... 2003 approximately but maybe slightly later or earlier than that but for almost 20 years and now i've finally done it and i i'm just i'm thrilled anyway let's go back to talking about the details if you want to see the full story of that it is on uh, the review on my website the link is in the description in the comments but the decals went on really well there are some key decals but you can see in the picture even uh, that are missing in this older box thing such as the lettering on the underside of the wing which um says army de l'air that is missing um i don't know if that just wasn't on the aircraft originally or whether it just wasn't included as part of the boxing i could have bought some aftermarket decals but I chose not to, um, partly because money was extremely tight at the time of filming this, but also because I wanted to build it out the box as it was. The decals that you get with the uh, Pardou du Pont set are more modern. Uh, they also have an anniversary screen on there, which is gorgeous, so quite sad I don't have that. But yeah, it, it is a more modern scheme. But you can also buy some amazing aftermarket decals that give you lots of different options. Uh, for all the different tales that the Patel de France have had, they've got loads of different anniversary schemes that you can choose from. So if you are building that, I do recommend you do check out those decals. They're normally around 7 to 15 euros, depending on where you get them, and it will really improve the build. Now, we're getting towards the end of this, and that means we're going to come up to the photos. Now, I built a little airfield so you can see all the Patel de France aircraft together, and there's one photo I'm super proud of. It's going to be the first one you see, and it actually fooled one of my friends in terms of realist and I'm not great at editing photos so some of them look very janky but I'm really really proud of this project I thank you so much all you guys for the support you you put into on YouTube if you haven't subscribed already please do so there'll be new videos weekly for the foreseeable future and also you can watch me build these model kits live on Twitch I stream normally two to three times a week depending on uh, my jobs as well so uh, I'm on Twitch as Ms. Modeler on Twitch. Check me out again, link in the description and below. And I've done a full write-up uh, of this kit and also the Patu de France anniversary kit and my overall experience with all these kits on my website as usual. Again, link in the description and down below. Thank you so much. Love you. Thanks for watching the video. I really appreciate it. Hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed what you saw here today to see more content as it comes. You can also follow me on Twitch at twitch.tv slash missmodeler to watch me play these games live and chat with me. See you later. Bye.